Hi everybody, it's uh, Joe here from Data Analytics Ireland. We do weekly blog posts, live streams and video tutorials on anything and everything data analytics. Today we want to talk about how to do some testing with Python using unit test. The purpose of this is to help you to automate your testing, write your test scripts within your Python environment and then run it and get your output on a HTML report which you can open in your web browser. So let's hop over the code, see what it's all about and see how you can achieve this. Right, so uh, welcome back to uh, Data and Linux Ireland. Um, so today we're going to talk about testing, how to automate it. But before we hop into the code, quickly want to kind of see what we're trying to achieve. Okay, so you're faced with a scenario where you have a number of tests. And usually when you have your output from your tests, you can run a bit of logic yourself and basically check everything and see everything's okay. But that's an extra step after your processing is finished. So would it be nice if in Python it actually checks all the data for you as well and then tells you has it passed or failed. So that's the purpose of this video. Let's take you through it. So I've created two test scenarios here. Uh, we have some data and the data is basically in a dictionary. I'll see, show it to you now in a second. And the three values are in the dictionary that are created initially are Joseph, Elizabeth and Patrick. And what we're basically going to do is we're going to basically transform them. But we want to make sure when they're transformed that the actual values come out correctly and that the Python script and the testing automated test we're going to show you checks it and says yes it's passed or no they haven't. Now in just to say to you in this test scenario it's either it's all right or it's none. So if one bit of it's wrong it all fails. So in in the outcomes here we have a scenario if Joseph, Elizabeth and Patrick are the same and the input as of our, what we're expecting well then we're going to have our 100% pass. But if one of them are different, uh, in this scenario, Patrick won, uh, I'll take you through it anyway, but Patrick won is different to Patrick, it's going to fail. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll show you what you're passing, then I'll show you what you're failing. And basically then you can see how the actual report that I've created to um, Python will basically view that in your web browser, which is in a really, really nice format. Um, you can actually, in the script I'm going to show you as well, you can add lots lots more uh, tests. I've only done two for the purpose of this, but you can add lots more. Let's go over to that in two seconds. But what we're checking for essentially is that the values are feeding in, um, and we're going to compare them against some expected values. If they're based, the test is added equal. And if they're equal, then there's no difference. So the base across the price criteria is no differences are found. And the second test we're going to do is are the alphabetic. So we can't have any numbers in it. Okay. Um, so as only letters are in the transform data. So the purpose of uh, using this data um, or this testing and this data and this automate and all this is we've only got two here, but you could have 40, 50, 60 te different tests you want to do on the data. So this is a handy way of checking it and you don't even have to go back and check, check the data afterwards. It will do it all for you. Okay. So we want to basically get the final output um, in a report and it basically shows you whether everything passed or failed and then if it fails uh, it'll show you here the reason for its failing and then you can go and fix it. So this is the end results and the report we're going to use. I'm going to close this now but basically I'm going to refresh that now in a while. So this this should just the 31st of 10, 2357. So when we're finished um, this should change. But uh, let's hop over to the code because that's what you're here for. So right when you're testing, um, I want to create an automated test. There's a couple of things you need to do. So there's basically three files you want to create. All right, the first file, which um, basically I'll call it automated testing Python. You can call it your own name, but basically this is the file with all the source data. But what it also does is the file when it's run, uh, when we've run this, basically goes and look, creates the data and basically creates it into a basically a function that uh, pass it over to the other two files to process okay so essentially that is what um, this file is doing so let's take it through it okay so essentially um, the first file is um, to basically create a set of data that you want to pass in and you want to test against your expected values so what we're going to do is we're going to basically, as normal, in, uh, import panels as PD. Pretty straightforward. We've done that in other videos. Okay. Then we're going to create a dictionary. Okay. Um, we've basically named before Joe, Liz, Pat, 
and name after Joseph Elizabeth Patrick. Now Patrick won here, but uh, we'll change that to Patrick for a second. Okay. Um, now the idea behind this is these are actually the name before is we're we're basically theoretically um, basically saying we're doing some processing in the background and this is before and after values. So our after values shouldn't match what we expect. And what that's what you'll see now in a second in the next file. Then we're gonna just basically pass all that data into a data frame. And then this function is basically going to say, it's going to say create a variable called transfer applied equals data name after. And that's basically this dictionary values here, dictionary key value pairs there, okay? And it's gonna look, look at those values there and pass it to the next uh, bit of the script, this file here. And then this is the bit here now where it basically that's the return. So basically the return is when it runs all this function, it returns the values of Joseph, Elizabeth, and Patrick, and they get passed here. So let's hop over here to the next bit of code. Okay. So this is the main bit of the code that will basically take the data in, check it, process it, and then get it ready to be passed to the final bit of the Python code in the HTML report to generate the um, to generate the report that you want. So there's a thing called HTML test runner, import test runner. This is a very handy um, a package library that Python has done. And they, what it's actually used for is to generate the report uh, essentially that you need. So um, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the I'll put a link in the um, description um, for this for people that are looking to know where do they get it from. It's also my blog post. I have a blog post. Every video I do have a blog post, so I will should have it in there as well. So I'll put it in both. Um, but the idea is we're just basically going to import that. Then we're going to import unit test. So the unit test is the actual piece of Python script that's actually going to allow us to test what comes from here, which is returned here. Return transforms applied, which you know is equal to this here, name after, which is actually these values. So it's gonna look at these values, bring these values in, okay? Um, and basically, that's basically what this line is doing, is bringing in the main, which is here from the function, okay? The values that are returned from the main, all right? Next thing we're doing is we've done is, we've created a class. So the class is called test values, and it's basically the unit, te unit test dot test case, okay? So what essentially that is doing is it's bringing in the, it's it's gonna create a class to allow us create two tests. So remember back here when I had this open, I think I would, yeah. It's creating these two tests within Python. So that's what this is doing. So we go back in here. Um, so we got the first test essentially is test value, value equals. So this is this value here, okay? This, this is the first test to test for this, okay? And what it's basically doing is, we have the expected value. So this is our test. We're basically saying, when these values get passed in from here, we're expecting them to be these three values. And we're gonna run a test on it, okay? And basically, so these are the expected values, and these are actually the values received, which is the main, okay? And this is what comes from here, all right? Um, and essentially then we've got a thing called self that is third equal. And essentially what that's doing is saying a third equal essentially says, what's the expected values of these values? What's the value received this value, which we know is, should be these values, okay? All right. And then basically, that basically runs a test to see if they're equal or not. Now, at this point, it doesn't give it out on the screen. What will happen is the results of that would get passed in here. And then we'll basically be able to generate our report, which we'll show in the web browser. So I just want to take you through the next test. We'll run this and then I'll show you the output. So the next one, next test we're doing is test underscore value is alphabetic. And the whole idea behind this is again, what it's doing is values received equals main. It's retrieving all the values from here, which we know are, comes from here, which comes from here, which ultimately comes from these three values here, because there's name after, all right? And what it's doing again is it's looping through them for each one's for C and values received here, okay? And it's basically saying a search through is an alpha. So essentially what it's basically saying is it's going to look at each one and saying is it alpha. So is it alphabetical only? So 
if it has numbers in it, it will basically fail. So when I run this now in a second and I open up the report, it should say both passes because the, the values we're passing in here, okay, those three will equal these three here. So let's run this. Well, actually, let's go to, sorry, let's go to the last, um, let's go to the last file just to show you what's going on. Um, sorry, I should have done that. So we're basically, again, we are using the HTML test runner and the unit test, and we're basically then, we're bringing in the test value. So what we're doing is we're calling this script here and this class, okay? And we're bringing in the values that are returned from here and here, okay? Um, basically what it's doing is sweet, unit test makes sweet, it's testing those values. It's basically looking at those values. It's bringing them into this file. It's open, well, it's opening the file, it's bringing it in, and then it's basically giving it some, basically those files, it's, it's passing in these variables and basically this would be in the output of the file and this is what you'll see is either a pass or a fail. So there's one other file I I want to show you, but I'll probably show you that at the end. I want to show the output first and then explain how the report is generated. Okay, so if we run this now. Okay, just let that run. So that's just doing its thing there. Right, so that has run. Okay, so as you can see, if you're automated testing here and you're saying, well, what's happened? Is there anything anything going on if it pass failed? You wouldn't really know. This has basically worked and is with no errors, right? Error, error, exit zero, exit code zero base means it's worked perfectly, there's no errors. So what we want to see is, well, actual fact, what is, what, where's the report? So when I go back here, I basically said that this report was going to change and it has it's changed the second 11 uh quarter to nine at night and if i go in here i'll open this up for you okay perfect so as you can see this report is run so there you can see start time duration and it says pass two and this basically shows it shows the testing output result and it basically shows you this so it basically says okay there was two tests done two pass zero fail zero errors and if we go in here, then it basically shows you the two tests we've done. So if we go back here, test value equals, and we go back in here, it's this test here is passed. And then if we go back here, test value is alphabetic, which is this test. Okay, so that is how you basically, um, the, how basically the testing works. And you can see if it's pass or fail. We're gonna show you now and then scenario where it fails. So if we just go back into the logic, okay, so these are, are basically our, our values I want to pass in. We're going to say, so we, we know we're doing some sort of transformation, but we want to make one of them wrong. So essentially what's happening here is if we do, when we rerun this again, it's going to update the report, but basically going to fail because it's not these values, even remember I said at the outset, that when it runs the test, it's either 100% right for, or nothing. Even if one bit of it's wrong, it's all gonna fail. So this is all gonna fail on this, and it's gonna fail on this. Reason being is there's a one here on the data we passed in, and then because it's not all alph alphabetic, um, and because there's a one in actually one of the values passed in, it's gonna fail. So let's just rerun this again, okay? All right, so that's run again, um, as you can see, here and exit code zero. If we go back up here, uh, we're gonna close this. Okay, and if we go back in here. Now, this, this has changed again to 848, right? But if we just reopen this, okay. So now, the first the first time we ran it, um, the actual test passed, okay. Now, they failed, as I expected. And what is good about this, and uh, what I really like, is you can go in and see why did it fail and it gives you the output so when it ran the test the first time it compared what came in with what i was expecting and because they both equaled it basically passed so you didn't have any of this so this is really handy to show you where it's failing and why it's failing 
and you can go in and check and um, it's actually a really good report i recommend people look into it um basically what this is doing is and false is not true but essentially what's happening here is we know that this value patrick one has come in but patrick one includes a number which we in the test is test it's only for alphabetic so because it's included a number it's failing and as i said at the start if everything if everything fails um or if one part of it is wrong everything fails so again that's a really really good um report to run and as you can see it's actually quite quick that when you run your scripts scripts now obviously if you're bigger longer scripts it's going to take you longer but it's a really really useful a way of if you wanted to present your findings quickly to people um and in a format that'd be easy for them to follow this is a way to do it i thoroughly recommend you use it so let's go back here now so what we've done so far is we've shown you how to create the test scripts create the report but there's one thing you're probably wondering is if we go back here how do i get it to look and feel like this okay so this is all basically there is a python file which we'll go through now and i'll quickly show it to you and basically it would show you what um or what or how that this look and feel happens and how it pulls in the data okay right um you're probably wondering how uh this is created so we've taken you through the actual input data we bring in the testing the test cases the validations that it does and then it outputs as we know to this report but actually how does this report run well in this program um we basically there we have a thing called html test runner which we've imported and brought in to use as part of the program now when it's actually all the processing done it's looking to export it out to an html file through this okay it actually references a file here which is separate installed within the package and what this file does is it takes all the data in processors and it basically applies the look and feel of the package so i'm not going to go through it because it's quite long there's a lot in it but the main bits just to, to look at it brings in the data but this is basically the template that will appear in your output and you can amend all this now i haven't touched it it's really good i actually like the way it looks and feels so i'm not going to touch but you can amend this and add stuff to it and do what you want to it um the stuff here around the title you know uh, there's a function here there's functions more functions um, I think it has CSS possibly down here. Yeah, here's your style sheet. So here's style sheet, should I say? Um, here's your CSS and everything around that. Your font size, your color, so on and so forth. So that is actually how uh, I've generated the actual output file, the HTML file. So I hope you like this video today. It's hopefully taking to a very entry level um, of how to automate testing. As I said before at the start, you can um, add lots and lots more tests to this. And actually by adding lots more tests into here, they will actually appear in the output for you. Okay, so if I added more in, um, the actual tests will all appear in the next line, uh, pass or fail, so on and so forth. So it's a very handy and quick way that um, as you add, you can test, validate, and then your report grows. You don't really have to do too much more with the report. So I hope you liked this video today. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, um, please do. I really appreciate um, like, subscribe. Please tell your family, friends, or anybody who might be interested in this video, what it's about, and the channel, what it's about, how it can help them, and how it can help them to automate any testing or, in general, any of their data analytics projects. So we'll catch you soon. Take care, look after yourself, and thanks for popping by.